Thank you all for your patience. We're going to get started now. It's 9.02. Um, hello and good morning. My name is Ruth Colon Wagner and I'm the Director of Training and Development with the New York Association of Psychiatric Rehabilitation Services, also known as NIAPRS. I'd like to begin today uh, by, first of all, thanking all of you for being so flexible with our change update for today's webinar. Uh, like we said um, before in an email, in response to the survey that we sent out to you, we really listened to you and we modified our topics to be able to provide you with the training topics that you requested. So we just needed a couple more weeks to work on that. Um, prior, prior to introducing our presenter for today, as always, I'd like to remind you of the rest of the dates for this training. Actually, rest of the dates, so that means we're coming to a close. Um, so the next activity is the Learning Collaborative for Supervisors, and that is scheduled for Tuesday, November 29th at 9 o'clock. Uh, the Supervisors Implementation Planning Call is scheduled for Tuesday, December 13th at 9. And then the fifth webinar called Care Management Toolbox, Skills, Tools, and Resources for Care Managers and Supervisors. And that's scheduled for Tuesday, January 10th at 9 o'clock. And that is going to be our last in our webinar series for supervisors and care managers in terms of the overall topics. We do have some other activities for supervisors. And so following that, are our supervisor face-to-face -face sessions. And for Region 4, that is Manhattan and Bronx. That is scheduled for March 7th. For Region 5, Brooklyn and Queens, and that's scheduled for March 8th. And then Region 6, which is Long Island, and that is scheduled for March 10th. So lastly, if you've missed any of our activities in this training series, please go online to your LMS account to view them. And once you've done so, just mark it complete. And if by chance, if we have any of your records, um, your attendance records inaccurate, please just send me an email and we will make sure to get that corrected. And my email is R-U-T-H-C-W, so Ruth C-W, at nyaprs.org, and we will absolutely correct that attendance. I want to thank our partners on this project, NYCCP, CPI, NYSCCBH, and the Coalition for their ongoing expertise and flexibility. Today, our training is Time Management Skills and Workload Distribution. It is for both care managers and supervisors. And our trainer today is Robert Peter II, or Bob. And uh, Bob is a direct focused now, let me say that again. Bob is a direct, results-focused coach, trainer, and team facilitator. His professional experience includes over 20 years of work in human resources and the learning and development profession. His organization, Insights to Improvement Incorporated, is a coaching, learning, and development organization, and they work with companies in a variety of industries, and that ranges from small businesses to large global organizations. Bob's educational background includes undergraduate work in economics and graduate work in human resource development. Bob is a certified professional behavioral motivational analyst, I can't even say that, sorry about that, and expert assessment-based solution provider. He is an active member and speaker for organizations, including the Society for Human Resource Management, American Society for Training and Development, and he is the founding member of the Greater Rochester Human Resources Career Network. Bob has worked with clients, uh, including Wegman Food Markets, Corning Life Sciences, Bausch & Mom, Stu Leonard's AXA, Rochester City School District, Edison Schools Incorporated, Unity Health Systems, University of Rochester, St. John's Fisher College, and Xerox. So Bob, you have a very impressive resume and we are thrilled to have you here today. Thank you. Sure, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. And uh, like I said, hopefully in the next hour or so, uh, we'll put together some information on the topic of time management and kind of workload management that can be helpful for uh, for the team members online, and we'll be glad to answer some questions as we go. So again, uh, just for those of you familiar with the webinar process, if uh, there are certain questions or information uh, that you want to convey, you can do that in the uh, question dialog box, and we'll do our best to either answer those questions um, in, in process as far as the webinar is concerned, um, or we can maybe come back and field some of those questions after the webinar, and uh, like I said, time permitting, if uh, we don't get a chance to answer anything um, or have resources to line up with those questions, we'd be happy to follow up uh, post-webinar as well. 
Um, so again, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the topic of time management and workload distribution in uh, just a second. Um, in preparation for the webinar, there was some information that was sent out ahead of time. So today what would be really, really helpful is uh, if you did get a copy of the um, participant uh, handouts, if you will, they kind of correspond with a number of the different slides and information that we'll be presenting today. So if you do have a copy of the uh, worksheets or access to those, um, those are something that you would actually be completing some different activities as we go through the webinar today, um, just to hopefully, again, put to use some of this information as we're covering it. Um, so if for any reason you don't have that information, again, we will make sure you still get it. Um, you still be able to work from the slides and the information that I'm presenting. But if you do have those worksheets printed out, we will be putting those to work as part of this process. We'll also be covering some information related to a pre-read article. And um, I will be mentioning kind of the coaching worksheet um, that was sent out as a uh, pre-work uh, pre assignment as well for those of you that completed that. Or you may be interested in completing it after the webinar, and I will touch base on that information as well as we go through the rest of this morning. Okay. So time management workload distribution. Um, again, I've, I've done some work as well uh, in various organizations here around the Rochester area um, as far as the um, type of work and things that folks are working on here. Uh, programs and uh, housing, and uh, we have different agencies here and had an opportunity to work uh, with those, those folks on a local basis as well. So I have a little bit of familiarity. I'm not going to claim to be an expert in regards to some of the probably the issues and challenges you face. But the one nice thing about time management and workload distribution is that's really a challenge for everyone these days. Um, I think no matter who's in what role, um, just with changing times and technology, um, there's just a lot of burden um, in regards to um, the amount of work and how much we're cramming into the time that we have um, to get all the work done and still kind of balance some things out with regards to the bigger picture and life as we know it. So I'm going to start with a real quick time management story. Um, I was actually employed by Wegmans, and that was the reason for me moving over here to Rochester. I uh, worked for Wegmans Food Markets and Chase Picking, which was a division of Wegmans uh, for a handful of years, probably about 20 years ago. And um, in that experience, actually, we had time management training at the time and uh, Eagle Time Management Systems, which they may have been purchased by someone these days. Uh, they may still be around, but um, the heavy time management system involved kind of at the time a day planner and, you know, lots of checklists, right? So, hey, here's what I need to do and I need to prioritize everything, you know, A, B, C, D um, and check some things off and incorporate that. So, to me, not that that wasn't helpful, um, but what I found out on a personal basis was that wasn't a system that necessarily worked for me exactly as it was presented. And I think my goal today is to talk a little bit about time management, but really, really ask you to think about personalizing the things that will work for you. There's no system, there's no process, there's no tools that are going to work for everybody across the board because each, each person's very unique. Um, and again, even if we work in similar jobs, we're going to be facing different situations. Um, and we want to be able to leverage our experience. So one of the things that's really, really important is hopefully that as we go through this information, there's some general time management tips, there's some general time management models. Um, but the idea is what are one or two things that might be takeaways that you can kind of personalize and put to work for yourself? Because that was really important to me. So it wasn't not worth going to Eagle Time Management. It wasn't not worth having a planner and uh, utilizing the planner and the tools. But what I found was it was more of kind of one or two things within the scope of that process that was helpful to me. And that's what my hope is uh, for all of you is just to pick up one or two things that's going to start helping you uh, do a little bit better job or feeling actually just more in control because control is very motivational. When we feel we have a sense of control over some things, that's helpful. So anything that helps us achieve that, that's what we're looking for as far as the work today. So I want to start with just a slide that involves a little bit of reading. But I'm going to let you read through this slide, so I'll just give you a minute to do that, and uh, then I'll talk a little bit about the information that's on this slide. So a couple of key things here that I'm a firm believer in um, that comes out of the kind of the cartoon are key words there, which is productive life, right? So a lot of times when we go to training, we're trying to leverage 
uh, certain skill sets to make us more effective in whatever role or whatever job we're in. Um, time management, like most of the things that I train on um, topically, um, is something that applies across the board. So the idea here is, as we go through this training, we're definitely looking for tools to make us a better uh, you know, case, case manager, uh, make us a better supervisor, uh, make us a better whatever it is as far as our work is concerned. But in reality here, I think it's about feeling that we're a little bit more product, product, pro, we're a little bit more productive across the bigger picture, which is life, right? So if we can become a little bit more productive at work, great. Maybe that gives us a sense of control. Uh, that allows us to be a little bit more productive, um, you know, when we're at home or we're trying to manage our, our social schedules or, you know, like me, I have four kids. So, um, you know, managing the kids' schedules and kind of making all of those things work and fit together. Um, what I found is in my coaching work, a lot of stress comes from when, you know, those gears aren't working well together. And anytime we can really train on a topic that might be helpful um, to both sides of the equation, work and life in general, that's going to be a real plus. So my challenge to you is just think about some of these things in the construct of um, really how does this impact my ability to be more productive and more meaningful uh, regardless of if I'm at work or I'm at home. The second piece has to do with Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And again, that book has been around for a very, very long time that I think those habits stay pretty true. Um, and really the first habit or habit number three talks about putting first things first. And I love this quote simply because, you know, Covey mentions in there, it's not so much about time management, it's really about us managing ourselves. And so again, we get caught up on, we all have the same amount of time, but how we kind of manage ourselves to make the best use of that time is the real challenge. Um, and we're going to talk more and more about this. So you'll see from me that this comes down to a couple key things, not so much the tools you use, um, but the fact that you're actually using whatever it is that you select that's going to be helpful. Okay, so again, just a couple things that gets us started on the topic of time management, but we really have to take ownership for those types, whatever we decide that we're going to do. One of the uh, session pre-works, to me anyway, is why we do what we do. So time management is about basically accomplishing things, right? Workload management is about accomplishing the workload, um, better managing those processes. But why do we do any of this stuff? Okay, so I think what's important here is when we start talking a little bit about goals, again, we're going to have professional goals and we're going to have personal goals. And I really believe as a coach that it's important that, you know, all of those things are kind of mapped out there because that's where we pull our motivation from. Um, if we know we're working to achieve certain things, um, that's great. And are those things in alignment? Can we keep these goals in front of us? So all my coaching clients fill out this worksheet. We talk a little bit about the goals, the alignments, what are they working on inside of work? How's that impact things that are going on outside of work that are important to them? And there's no rules here. So it's not about a comparison mode of saying, hey, my financial goals need to be this. Or even if I have to have financial goals, I don't need to have any financial goals. Maybe I have goals in other areas. And they're yours. So there's no right or wrong. It's just have some things jotted down that are important to you. Because a lot of time work provides us a way of achieving some of those things. Um, and what's really more powerful probably for the business that you're in is that the purpose statement, you know, what are you all about? So again, I just shared as an example, and this came from Jack Canfield's book, who also wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. So you might've heard of that title in the past. And I'm not, I don't care what books you read or don't read, but the success principles, um, again, that's the book that I kind of pulled a couple of these activities out of. And what's important here is have a purpose statement and I like mine, right? So of course it's mine and I don't have to worry about being judged on that. I'm not asking anybody else to like it or use it as theirs. Um, but my purpose statement came down to just being using my optimism and practicality to support and engage others to have fun achieving breakthrough results. And, and again, that aligns pretty well with my coaching work that I do. It aligns pretty well with my team building work that I do. It aligns pretty well with the training that I do. Um, and as far as on a personal basis, had an opportunity to coach football. I worked with youth, uh, which was awesome. I had an opportunity to put that to work there. So the combination of having a goal or two written down and in front of you on a daily basis and being clear on how you want to achieve that goal, that becomes a litmus test for the day. So I'm talking a little bit bigger than the mechanics of time management, but if these things are in place, it really empowers you to pick and choose the time management strategies that are going to work for you, and it reminds you of why you're doing this stuff in the first place. So my hope is, like I said, if you haven't had an opportunity to fill out the coaching worksheet, um, don't worry about doing it right or wrong. I always say just do it. And uh, that might be the first step in generating at least 
some baseline motivation around why do I want to be more productive? Why do I want to accomplish what I want to accomplish? Okay. So what we're going to do is, um, by the way, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, we sent out a short survey. I think it was just a few questions regarding kind of the topic of time management specific to your jobs. And we had quite a few responses. So again, for those of you who uh, were able to get back to us, uh, we really appreciate you taking a few minutes and sending that, uh, sending that information to us. As a person that hasn't worked in your jobs, it helps me a great deal to get familiar or, or at least learn a little bit more um, about some specific things related to your roles uh, in regards to the topic. So again, thank you very much for that. We are going to use the survey feedback. So what I did was I just took the survey feedback and I tried to identify common themes and pieces of information that were overlaps and try to just create a quick list, if you will, of kind of what are the summary bullets associated with the uh, information that was sent in. So again, if it's not here, you know, it's not that I didn't read the information, it's just I did my best to kind of summarize that into a handful of bullets that we could take a look at together. So the first thing was the biggest challenge to manage in the workload and time in your roles. And what I'm going to invite you to do is just taking a look at these lists. And again, on handout page number one, if you're looking at the participant handouts, there's a list there. Just highlight, <clears throat> excuse me, highlight or circle, or however you want to mark, any one of these things that might be helpful as a focus as we go through the rest of the webinar today. So as we go through the webinar and we talk about different time management strategies, or you might get some ideas on, on maybe how to do things more effectively, what is it that the what you want to work on? And that's what we want to identify right now. So if I select interruptions, I just want to think about interruptions as I go through the rest of the webinar. Is there anything that, that's being covered in regards to this information that might be helpful in the context of me better managing interruptions that are impacting my time. Um, so again, I'm not overly concerned with what you select. I would just like you to select something from the list, or if it's not on the list, you know, jot it down. By all means, any time today, add, add items to the list or the information that we're providing. Um, but have something that you're thinking of as an example or a working example as we go through the rest of the webinar. All right. So the second piece of the survey information, the same thing, just uh, highlight just for a point of reference. Uh, for yourself, things that might be helpful to you, is if you could eliminate something. Now, again, eliminate's a strong term because when we start talking about whether we can eliminate something, and this is going to be on handout number two, um, you know, there's a question of, well, if we can eliminate it and it's actually wasting our time and it's not linked to our goals and it's not helping us be successful, by all means, maybe we can go ahead and do that, okay? Um, but what I found is I'm doing coaching work and training and working in organizations is there's things that you can't eliminate, right? So um, they're outside of our sphere of impact or control in regards to whether we can eliminate those things. Or we may not agree that we have to do something, but we have to agree to disagree and go ahead and do those things anyway. And then we're in a position where we have to take a look at those things and say, as an example, travel time, um, as an example, um, is something that, you know, hey, if, if that's a piece of my work because of either traffic or I rely on public transportation and schedules outside of my own, um, or whatever the case and challenges with travel time, or I just live in a certain location and I work in a different location. For whatever reason, travel time is there. I might not be able to eliminate travel time. I might be able to kind of work it a little bit and manage it more effectively or choose my scheduling to maximize uh, my work time and minimize my travel time. But there's always going to be a piece of travel time there. So one of the things that we want to be able to do is if we can't eliminate it, we have to manage it more effectively. And we might want to look at how do we turn that time into more productive time or how do we convert that into something that's a positive for us. So an example with travel time is maybe I use that time and I always do this in my car. I love driving a cup of coffee, give me some time and you know, solve the world's problems and things. But I always keep a notepad where I can jot down some thoughts or ideas. So if I stop at a stoplight or I'm driving along the way and I make a stop at a lot of times I'll think of things and my brain's working through some stuff. And a lot these may fall into that category when we take a look at the matrix in a little while as things that have low urgency but high importance. And a lot of times when we start reflecting and thinking through some stuff, that stuff falls into that quadrant that kind of gets ignored otherwise. So that's just an example of how are we using that time that we can not, not necessarily eliminate, but how do we get creative and kind of make sure that it's either productive time, okay, um, or it's a reward for us. Hey, it's quiet time, a cup of coffee. It allows me to grab, you know, kind of just be thoughtful with my own thoughts. Maybe I listen to a book on tape or, uh, you know, an audio book 
um, whatever that is while I'm in the car, but that's my time, right? And maybe that's a way that I rejuvenate my batteries during that time. So we take on productive time in our opinion, and we want to convert that over because we can't always eliminate those things. Okay, but if there's something there, just again, note it because it's something that you want to be aware of. Is there an opportunity to eliminate or is there an opportunity to more effectively manage and or convert this uh, particular thing into something that's going to be helpful to me or at least motivational to me in regards to more effectively managing my time? All right, so handout number three, the best time management trick or tool. So again, this was, this was kind of helpful um, in regards to, you know, again, what are the best practices out there in regards to what's working for other people? And as I mentioned when I started, the Eagle Productivity System, if, as it was presented, probably worked for lots and lots of people. It didn't necessarily work for me, but there was pieces of the Eagle Productivity System that did work for me. There was pieces of the system and how someone else used it that I could look at that and say, hey, if I modify that a little bit, I can probably, I can probably put that to work for myself. So again, here, if there's a best practice up there that you didn't think of, it might just be something as simple as aha, an aha, hey, you know, I didn't think about using my text to talk on my cell phone to type out my notes. And then they're all kind of typed out, I just added them and they're good and they go into my client file. Okay, so there's some simple things like that I'm sure that are out there where some of us are saying that'll either work for me or it won't, but maybe that's something that I can do. Um, and I could probably do that while I'm driving, right? I'm not encouraging you to crash using your phones. I don't mean that. But if you were, if you were set up safely to do that, um, that's an opportunity to use that travel time in a more productive manner. The number one resource that all of you have, that everybody always has, that we probably underutilize, is each other. Okay, so if there's a couple hundred people of you out there um, on this webinar or you're out working um, in the vicinity of each other, um, there is a tremendous wealth of experience, job knowledge, um, you know, all of those things that people have. And a lot of times we don't stop long enough to ask. And again, that's kind of one of those quadrants where probably pretty important to do, but not really that urgent to do. So we just don't do it. Um, and what I would really encourage you is if this topic, time management and workload management is really important, then after the webinar, connect with a handful of people. Compare notes, what's working for you, for each of you? Is there some best practice in there that can, can become a continuous improvement um, type process or system change or things that we're doing that may be really, really helpful? Um, but the most powerful learning happens in my training when people get together and start talking about how they're applying it, what are they doing? Um, and everybody can kind of learn from each other. And again, it doesn't mean it has to be an exact transition of information or this process is an exact. But if I'm sitting there and I've never thought about it, um, I can put my own spin on it and maybe that works for me really, really well. So if you just look down this list and say, oh, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna work, that's pretty easy to do. But what I would encourage you to do is look at that list and say, how could this work for me? Just ask yourself that question, how could this work for me? Um, it doesn't have to be the exact, but it might be helpful to you as well. So best practices, again, thank you for those of you that share that information. Um, and we learn a lot from each other. My hope is I get you thinking about some stuff Maybe there's a couple items in there might be personally helpful, but then if you even share out how those items were helpful with a handful of colleagues, do some peer coaching or get together in your groups or in your areas, um, maybe bring that up as a 10 minute agenda item and a meeting coming up in the future, that can be really, really uh, rewarding as well. All right, so let's take a look in your handouts on page number four. You'll see this graphic um, and there's space there for you to kind of just jot in some notes if you so choose to do that, okay? This was based on the pre-read article Time management training doesn't work, right? So hopefully all of you don't log out. Again, where I'm at is on handout number four, and it's on slide number 13, but the title of the slide is time management training doesn't work. And it was based on the article that um, was, was uh, sent out ahead of time. So hopefully they say that you probably can see the screen now, but there's three components that were in that article. So again, it's not so much that any training isn't effective. It's supposed to give you some ideas and things to work on. Uh, but these are three core areas that we want to be aware of in regards to time management and the concepts of the old time management kind of, hey, checklist and, um, you know, focusing on just calendaring and scheduling. Um, maybe it's a little bigger than that now based on technology changes and some of the things that we're facing. So the first thing that they talked a little bit about was clarity. And this clarity, two things that you want to consider here is there's task and priorities 
And again, we get caught up in the task and the priorities of everything, right? What, did we, what do we have to do? What do we have to do? What do we have to do? So it's one task after another task after another task, and we're really busy setting priorities around the task that we have to complete. So a little bit of a, little bit of a change um, in mindset would be take first get clarity around role clarity. Um, and that's going to be a little bit different in regards to the scope that we're looking at when it comes to time management. So step back away again, and don't worry about necessarily what all the different tasks you have to do right away, but step back and say, what's my role about? What am I supposed to be accomplishing? So ultimately, it may be that, um, you know, I need to have my folks um, that I'm working with as a case manager, you know, they need to be self-directed, right? They need to be empowered. They need to kind of be set on their ways. I don't want to forget that. And I think the biggest, um, the biggest filter may be, you know, is, are these task activities really helping me get there? And if not, the things that I'm doing on a daily basis may be a little bit out of alignment of the bigger role responsibilities. Um, so again, when we think of roles, goals and roles and outcomes, um, and kind of that's over here, the tasks are kind of what do we have to do to achieve those? We just want to make sure, one, there's clarity and agreement on what those things are, and obviously that there is alignment. Okay, so that's a very powerful concept in regards to thinking through and stepping back away from what's eaten away our time on a task basis, just revisit the role. And I find that people very rarely do that. They don't stop and say, you know, have some fun, go back and read your job descriptions um, a little bit and look at all the other things that maybe you do and, and, and responsibilities that you have. But ultimately in our work, it's all about the independence of our, 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 our clients, right? Our internal clients or the folks that we're caring for. So, Keep that as a big picture element and use that as a major filter item for your time management. The second component is attention, to, attention management skills. So they say instead of worrying about time management skills, really the challenge we have these days is that we're inundated with stuff that captures our attention. It's a distraction. And you saw that that was on the list, right, uh, for some folks is that, you know, there's a lot of distractions. I have to control my distractions. All right, so again, um, I do a lot of behavioral-based training um, in organizations, and the idea is that some people are just wired to be more easily distracted than others, okay? So that's part of kind of how we're wired from a uh, behavioral standpoint. So awareness is important, but then we actually have to take strategies and put those in place so that we can manage our distractions a little bit more. We can't manage anything that we don't know what it is, and we can't manage anything even if we know what it is if we're not going to admit that it's a problem, all right? So I know for me personally, you know, if I sit down to do something, it's pretty easy for me to drift over here and check out my LinkedIn page. It's pretty easy for me to send a couple messages because I like to interact with people and I like to do all that stuff. But yet, you know, I need to get that report done or I need to get, um, you know, that invoice out in my own business, let's say. So the, the important things here, you have to be aware of what are distractions. You have to be able to admit that, hey, they are actually distractions when I'm trying to accomplish my my work-related tasks, um, I'm easily distracted. That phone in your pocket, while it's a powerful tool, it's probably one of our biggest distractions, okay? Um, I just had a conversation with my 18-year-old uh, my son last night. He's managing college. He's managing a pretty full-time job, full job and his own business on the side and doing a lot of things. And he said, Dad, I'm having a real ch problem focusing, you know? I sit down to do something and then something else over this way and that way. And, and I said, well, a piece of that is good for you. You understand that. Uh, but the second thing would be is now you have to look at it and say, what am I going to do about it, right? How do I eliminate the distractions? Even if it's leave your phone over here, you know, don't even look at it for a while. Um, and we can talk about that when we get to kind of what's urgent, what's important, what appears that way as we look at the Covey model, okay? Single task focus. For those of you that say multitasking is, you know, that's how I manage things more effectively, I think we have to multitask because our job demands that. But research says multitasking is not productive, okay? So as soon as our attention isn't focused on something, we become less productive. So if our attention is focused on 10 to 12 things, we probably even feel that way, that we're just not as productive as man if we could just hammer this thing out, okay? So research and brain research all backs up. If you can become single task focused on very important elements in your workload and your workflow, the idea is being able to execute on those and make sure that they're happening. So again, this is a personal question in regards to one, am I gonna admit what's actually distractions for me, um, even though there's some things in there that I might like to do? 
And secondly, am I going to admit that I think I brag about multitasking and in reality, I'm not really actually completing anything by the end of the day. Um, so maybe I have to rethink my own mindset a little bit on those two topics. Okay, and that's what the article wanted, us, wanted to really challenge us, challenge us to do. The third thing, workflow management systems. And this whole concept of is we're thinking through how we process and do our work on a daily basis. If you're riding the train in the morning on the way to work, your brain's going and it's kind of mapping out basically what does your workflow look like for the day, okay? Um, if you're you know, wrapping some things up or you're kickstarting your morning on Monday, maybe you have a workflow in your head of how that maps out and what's that gonna look like for the week. The idea here is get it out of your head, okay? We have to start writing some things down and it doesn't have to be a legitimate uh, flow chart with all the right symbols. It doesn't make a difference on how you do this, but just jot it down. And if it's a workflow around a process that's common between you and your coworker, and we're, we're both doing these things over and over again, if you map that out together, you may learn a lot about what, where there's opportunities to better manage pieces of the, the, uh, the workflow, uh, to better leverage tools or resources, to really make sure that that process is more efficient. But thinking through it, that's not a bad thing, but when you write it down, the power of that imagery becomes very, very helpful in regards to sorting out and identifying opportunities. So again, similar to me working with leaders and organizations, everybody has a vision of the ideal company, right? Everybody has an idea, a vision of the ideal department or the ideal customer experience or the ideal client experience. But a lot of times we don't write that stuff down. And as soon as we write it down, we empower our brains to do something different with it. So I would just encourage you to think about that. Use some of that time. I mean, again, if we have some downtime that we're stuck eating, maybe we start mapping out our workflow processes. Maybe we start talking about those as a group and there's opportunities in regards to better managing what's going on uh, related to our work. And by the way, as I mentioned, this works for phone. So maybe it's your personal flow management, right? Um, we all have to manage our budgets at home. We have to manage our kids. We have to do all of those things. Uh, but what does that actually look like? And uh, can, can we write that down and identify and then be able to see a visual representation of how our time is being spent? Okay? All right. So the next slide, you guys still seeing slides okay? Yeah. We're good? Okay, thank you. Just doing a little check here. This slide you have, but there's no handout associated with it. So again, um, if there's any notes to be had, feel free to make those on the back side of the handouts or somewhere where there's some space for you to do so. We'll be happy to share the slide. But I just added this one because I wanted to give you a couple snapshots of, you know, here's a couple time management uh, models or ways of mapping out a couple things important to time management and just talk to these elements a little bit with you um, as we're going through the information this morning. So really here, in this case, this goes all the way back to 1994, right? So that's a while ago, but um, again, not that much has changed in regards to standard time management principles, if you will, um, and what will we do with those things. So based on the graphic, you can take a look here. We establish responsibilities and priorities and objectives. So how do we do that? You know, we have our work goals and objectives. Think about that role goal versus task that we get caught up in. As I mentioned, that's gonna be pretty important. And then we wanna eliminate unnecessary and inappropriate activities. So again, we have to admit that they are unnecessary. We have to admit that they're probably not activities that we should be doing, but they are pulling our attention away from the things that we should be focused on and kind of working through. And then the last piece is obviously plan, schedule, and then do what? Do it, right? So how do you break that down? And a lot of that's in our head, so we might capture some of that in our workflow as we identify that. If we're looking at the outline bubbles, a couple of things I just wanna mention too is make optimum use of your peak energy time, okay? My peak energy time, personally, is between 5 a.m. in the morning and probably about 10.30 a.m. in the morning, okay? I know that I'm a morning person, and I'm very, very productive then, okay? Now, if you try to catch me at 10 o'clock at night, I'm not, right? Um, I used to do a lot of work on this, you know, in my business around kind of my kids' schedules, so it worked out really well if when they were younger and they went to bed at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, um, I would have a couple hours to do some different things and I didn't have to sacrifice that dinner slot, right? Um, but that being said, I can't do that anymore. So for whatever reason, maybe I'm old, um, maybe I, you know, my schedule's changed, whatever's work, but I know for me, my productivity time's in the morning. Anything I work on at night is almost useless because it takes me two or three times as long to do it, and there's probably errors in the information or I'm missing something. Um, so again, 
It looks like it's disconnected me again. I don't know why. Um, again, it's going to be very important to identify your optimum energy time and then be able to group activities that require your focus and attention in that energy slot if you can. So to whatever extent you have power over your scheduling and how you manage your caseloads, take a look at how that aligns with your peak energy times or what do you need to do to you know, step up your energy. And that doesn't include downing you know, two or three energy drinks, right? That doesn't count. But your natural energy, um, you have some peak times, take advantage of those. So the other bullet there that I want to talk a little bit about is include, um, well, let me jump over, delegate as much as possible. Um, so sure, this is easy if you have people to delegate to. Okay, um, but some of us don't necessarily have people to delegate to. Um, so again, on that one, take take a look at leveraging current responsive or relationships. Uh, who's in your sphere of influence? We're going to talk about that, and how can you maybe um, get support from different folks, even though they might not be direct reports or people directly related to exactly what you're doing. Okay. The other thing, retrain your clients. Okay, reestablish expectations. A lot of times, we do stuff in the best interest, right? of that person or what we think is the right thing to do, but we've really established customer or internal customer expectations um, that are now unrealistic and we can't get out from underneath them. So what I mean by that is my clients, I almost had a joke going that they knew that about three o'clock on a Friday, right, the ongoing joke is consultants are where? We're like at happy hour, we're on our boat, right? Because we can be all this other stuff. Well, a piece of that's kind of funny, but uh, the other piece of that is I don't think I have a lot of clients that expect a lot from me on Friday afternoons, right? Um, so um, again, I'm not saying I wouldn't be there for my client on a Friday afternoon, but I think that we sometimes forget that we set these expectations through our actions, okay? So take a look as you go through the analysis process of how you're spending your time, you know, do they really need this now? Do I need to be accessible now? I just had a uh, client yesterday, which is actually in a similar business of yours um, in regards to housing and counseling and residents, uh, residents for uh, folks that have disabilities, and, you know, they're always accessible on their phone. I said, well, whose fault is that? <laughs> you know, they said, well, our people think we need to be. I go, whose fault is that? And they said, well, I guess it's our fault. I go, right, because if you tell them that you just turned your phone off, they would probably be able to get their answers by somebody, right? Yes. Okay, so again, not saying there's always that opportunity, but if you can't delegate, that might be uh, an alternative that would work for you. Last but not least, if you're me, I use child labor, right? So I made my kids fill binders and do reproduction and copies for me and things. Um, kind of a joke, but at the same time, it was good for them and it was a way to offload a few ex uh, different responsibilities uh, that I didn't have to eat time up doing myself, okay? The other thing to be aware of is, what do you need to be an expert at, okay? So again, if you have to do something, you can't delegate it. If I have a high level of expertise, that's gonna take less time. So if I'm not good at Outlook, but Outlook could save me time, then I need to work at getting good at Outlook if really there's a trade-off for that initial eight hours of training to 100 hours it's gonna save me over the course of a year. So just think a little bit about that. There's gonna be opportunities to learn and become an expert, and as soon as you're an expert, you pick up efficiencies because uh, you're fully leveraging technology, you're, you're doing whatever it is you're doing um, better than everybody else and probably faster than everybody else. So that was one. Look, and again, there was no handout for that one. There is a handout for this one, which is handout number five, <clears throat> page five in your handouts. And here, just again, it doesn't get any simpler than this. There's an analysis phase to time management. There's an organizational prioritization phase. There's a planning phase, and there's an execution phase, okay? One of the, uh, one of the YouTube clips that I saw probably within the last week or so had to do with Navy SEALs, and they talked to the point of it's less about motivation and it's all about discipline, okay? So I, that stuck with me because I think, hey, man, I'm, I'm pretty motivated, right? And I think a lot of you are highly motivated to get out of bed every day, right, and go make a difference, which is a cool thing about your jobs is you touch people's lives in a positive way almost every day, right? So that's pretty, in, that's pretty motivational. You have a lot of drive to be able to do some of those things. Where we fall short sometimes, if I'm being truthful and honest about myself, is the discipline side. Okay, do I have the discipline to do the stuff that I don't feel like doing right now? Or do I have the discipline to do it anyway? Or do I have the dif discipline to do the hard stuff every single day? All right, and again, you, that might be work-related. Um, that might be on a personal basis. If you pick health, why don't people stick with exercise programs? 
because it's not easy, right? Um, but just because it's not easy doesn't mean it's not worthwhile, but that's an example of discipline. Do I have the discipline to do what I need to do every day to achieve this particular goal? And that's a higher goal than has anything to do with work necessarily, but I will say that all of these things are kind of interrelated. So anyway, personally, it resonated with me, so it's something I wanted to share with you. Um, but like I said, if you Google, I'm sure SEAL uh, Motivation Discipline, um, that two or three minute video comes up and they talk a little bit more about that. Um, but it really resonated with me and I thought it was worth mentioning in the construct of our time management information. Um, so each of these different areas, if we take a look at those, and again, um, if you're just jotting some notes down around analysis, uh, we talked about this with our earlier example which was job role and tasks. So what is eating up our time? What are the tasks that I do on a daily basis? People hate this, absolutely hate the idea of having to jot down how they're spending their time. If you choose not to do that though, it's really hard to work on making any changes to that. So I would always encourage people, it doesn't require a lot of thought, but every 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, just Take, have a pad with you and jot down what the heck just ate up my last 30 minutes, right? Jot it down, jot it down. If you do this for a week, I will guarantee that there will be things that surface to the top that you can, you know, almost instantly either eliminate or, or change or do that has a dramatic impact on how you're spending your time or that sense of control over what you need to accomplish in the time that you have. The other component under analysis is your sphere of control. So once you jot these things down, what are the items that actually fall in my sphere of control? And we wanna be very careful here not to make excuses. I don't have any control over that, so whatever, right? That's pretty easy to do. So we really have to be honest with, does this fall in something that we have control over or is it something that we don't, but we still have to manage? How are we gonna do that more effectively? The other component of sphere of control is your sphere of influence, and that's important as well, and it's kind of under the execution piece, but creating that list of who's in my circle of influence that helps me be effective and manage my workload effectively, who needs to be, okay? So an example would be, do you have all the necessary contacts that you need to make your life easier and achieve the goals for your cases or the people that you're managing their cases for, your clients, right? So do you have those things in place um, with regards to uh, accessible? If you don't have those relationships, you have to identify what they are, and I have a worksheet for you to do that, and then how are you gonna leverage those, okay? So if I don't have enough contacts in the Department of Housing, or my contact in the Department of Housing isn't working out for me, maybe I need additional contacts. Maybe I learn a contact's name from a colleague of mine who works really well and they're very timely, and maybe I'm dealing with someone with my colleague who's organized and my original person isn't, right? <laughs> um, and that's impacting me. So again, that sphere of influence under the execute column is gonna be pretty important. Job time, workload analysis, we talked about that. What are the root cause analysis associated with the problems or issues you're having and the challenges you're having with your schedules? Um, that's another way to analyze some things. And then what about resource analysis? Do you have the resources to do your job? That's in the, the, the questions, the Q13 questions way back when in regards to you know, organizational effectiveness and engagement surveys and things. Do people have the resources to do their job? What I found in organizations is there may be resources, let's say lists of contact people um, that you're gonna need to call when managing your cases. Uh, maybe there's um, you know, access to you know, a certain resource pool, but I'm either not aware or I forgot that was covered during orientation. So if you think about it, if you jot down and do a good job analysis of things wasting your time, or how many times do you have to go look up something, or how many times do you have to look at who am I calling and why, that's gonna be important, okay? Organizing and prioritizing, we're gonna talk more about that. We talked about workflow, workflow management system, which is kind of underneath the planning tab and kind of a build on, on that, okay? So let's look at organization. And this is just a quick self-assessment, um, if you will, that you can kind of fill out, but it might identify a few things that would be worth talking a little bit about. Do you keep yourself organized? So again, you have this handout on page number six, um, and you can read down through there, but just complete this on your own. You know, can you easily find specific email or electronic files when you need them? I would say I probably score a three. I have some room for movement here because I don't always store things where they should go and then I have to go look at my, you know, my archived emails or all the rest of that stuff. I keep supplies and materials need, I need close at hand. All right, so again, proximity to the things you actually need versus the things you can go and get once in a while. You need to have a grasp of what 
you're doing, right? So that's the analysis phase. So if you're clear on what it is you're doing, roles and tasks, then it's easier to answer that question. But right now, do you have to constantly search out things or is it pretty much at your disposal? Technology can help here, puts everything in our hands. If we so choose to use the right app and leverage our technology. Each time I read an email or document, it goes somewhere versus stays in my inbox. All right, so again, I'm probably, uh, you know, I don't do this as well. If you look at my inbox, there's probably 2,000 emails there because I just don't delete them all. I probably only, I never use them again, but I go back and organize them on a monthly basis and kind of buzz through. But I don't think that's probably as productive as it needs to be, so I wouldn't score myself super high on that one. I can quickly locate the contact information for people with whom I do business. So again, how am I organizing my contacts? Do I utilize technology to do that? Are they fairly accessible? For me, I know I can give myself a four. If I need to contact somebody tomorrow, they're either in my contact database or they're in the cloud in my uh, customer service management software um, that I can pull their information pretty quickly and be able to make that phone call or drop that email. Okay, so again, however you scored, I'm not asking you to be too self-critical, but just if there's things here that you can target and focus on, then that's gonna be like, how do I apply this on a personal basis? All right, let's look at prioritizing. And again, this is from Stephen Covey on uh, the seven habits of highly effective people. So we talked a little bit about this, but this is a way to um, actually organize your own tasks and role responsibilities, okay? So there is actually a worksheet in your handout. There's information about the slide on page 16, and then, excuse me, there's information about the slide on page number seven. Uh, in your handouts that talks a little bit about the examples of high urgency and high importance. And there's actually a worksheet on page number eight where you can actually look at that information and go ahead and put that in, okay? So that's something that um, is there for your use. But if we talk a little bit about this, what we have to be aware of is we wanna be working on nothing that falls into, in the slide example, quadrant four, uh, excuse me, quadrant three, which is not important and not urgent, okay? So again, the slide says dump it. We're getting rid of this stuff. This is stuff that we probably shouldn't be spending our time on or we should not be doing. Uh, maybe we're making up the fact that it's urgent or important, but it's probably not related to our tasks and our goals and what we really say are, is important to us, okay? In quadrant number four in the bottom left, urgent, not important, all right? So this is interesting because when the phone rings and I'm talking with someone, is that really urgent, right? I don't know, it might be urgent, it might not be urgent, but we're already saying just because the phone rang, it's urgent, okay? So as we go through each of these elements, you really wanna to think to yourself, is it perceived as being, or am I making it urgent when I don't really know? That call could have been, what, a telemarketer. Is that urgent or important? No, but I just made it more urgent than the person that I'm talking with. So we just have to be aware of kind of how we're um, perceiving some of this urgency. If it's urgent, not that important, it needs to get done, I'm not gonna do it. Maybe I'm in a position where I can delegate it, maybe I'm not. And if I'm not and it's urgent, I still probably have to manage some of those things and take care of those because that's gonna be a deadline thing that's due tomorrow. We've also created some of that on our own because maybe we put things off to the last minute if we're being honest about how we're managing our time, okay? The do it now stuff is urgent and important, so we're taking care of that stuff. And again, the idea here is do it when it needs to be done so that it doesn't create a fire for you later on. And then the last quadrant, important and not so urgent, this is the quadrant that gets neglected. So this might be professional development, um, this might be some things, conversations I need to have, uh, but I put them off because maybe they don't have to be had this second, um, and then they just don't happen. Um, so we really need to be better at deciding when to do these things, make them part of our schedule, and bring up that sense of urgency because, again, that's gonna pay us back. And a lot of the payback items fall into quadrant number two. All right, so I would invite you to take a look at once you do your time management analysis and your role analysis, or if you just wanna brainstorm using this particular worksheet, where does the different task information responsibilities fall? And it doesn't mean you're not gonna do them, but it may give you a better uh, mindset around how to approach those, okay? All right, on the next slide, and again, if you're following along in your handouts, there's some information about common time-wasting activities uh, related to um, what eats up our time. And you'll see on this list that it's pretty in depth, which is procrastination, multitasking. We talked a little bit about that one. Um, doing things more than once. So you may find in your analysis that you're jotting down some things. Man, I had to call this person three times. 
Maybe I should have been able to call him once with the three things that I needed to talk to him about, okay? Um, how do I approach that a little bit differently? Right? Maybe I had to fill out the same piece of paper three or four times, which made no sense because somebody so-and-so -and -so didn't originally get it. Uh, maybe there's a breakdown in that communication that I need to look at and fix so that I'm not creating the rework for myself, all right? Um, I do a lot of communication training, and you know, there's up to 25% of your work time is wasted based on ineffective communication in the workplace, generating rework, uh, generating follow-up issues, and all of those types of things. I don't know about you, I could use an extra day a week, right, to be more productive. So if we can chip away at some of those things that are wasting our time, that's going to be really, really important, all right? The other thing, if you take a look down the list there, it says striving for perfection. So again, this is a behavioral component, which some people are wired to wanting to make sure that we dot our I's, cross our T's, everything's exactly the way it's supposed to be before it goes out. That requires a tremendous amount of time. So it's not bad to produce that kind of quality, but the question becomes, what's the offset? You know, am I really bogging myself down or others down uh, when I don't need to be because maybe there's not the importance on certain things and I could maybe let those float a little bit or demonstrate a little bit more flexibility. So again, this is a self-reflection you know, question. Um, I'm not gonna say there's a right or wrong answer. I'm just gonna say that there's some things there you might wanna take a look at. Inefficient use of technology, and this will be actually on the self-assessment on page number 10 of your handouts. That's the slide I have up there. Is, you know, again, using technology to help manage our time, great stuff. If you go do a Google search on time management apps, It'll give you all kinds of apps that can help you work more effectively. If that's you and that you love that stuff, technology and apps, and you're actually gonna use the apps the way they're supposed to be used to manage your time, not just have fun with playing around with them, then that's great, you know, go do that, okay? But what I find is technology is one of the major distractions that we have. So we're diligently working on a report and what happens? We see a little bubble pop up, boop, there's an email. We're like, oh, I gotta answer that. Now we're over answering this email and we didn't finish what we were supposed to be working on. While we're answering this email, what happens? We were, we're typing up something, we're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to do that. Boop, now I'm off to here making some phone call to somebody, and now that report's still sitting over here. So technology has enabled us, even the personal stuff, right? All of a sudden I'm working on a report for work and Facebook tells me that it's somebody's birthday. I better go wish them a birthday because that's important, I don't want to forget, okay? But that just distracted me again from my work and from my focus. So that's why you know, I encourage you to think a little bit about you know, creating, this is what works for me, is schedule time specifically with no interruptions, okay? Because again, unless there was some colossal emergency, chances are that you can protect that time and be highly productive, but that means don't look at your phone, don't respond to emails, focus in on the tasks that you wanna be working on, and that's pretty important. If you filled out the self-assessment while I've been talking, that's probably what I would have been doing, right? Bob's talking, he's on a webinar, he can't see me, so I'm just gonna fill out this assessment. You probably walked through this, but again, it just gives you an idea of some things that could cause some issues in regards to efficiency. Um, and then you have the bigger list that kind of expands on some of these things. Um, but if you think about it, what about meeting effectiveness? We all have to go to certain meetings, but sometimes we ask to be participants in those, and sometimes we don't ask to not be. Um, so if we're in meetings where it feels like we're really making little contributions, um, or we could do something different instead of being there, just talk to the person, talk to the team leader, talk to your supervisor, and make sure that if you're there, you're bringing value. And if you're not there and you can bring value, that's good. Or maybe you aren't the person that needs to be there to bring value. But that's an okay conversation to have. And again, I'm not saying don't go to meetings. Meetings can be highly productive. Um, but sometimes I think we just include people in meetings because we wanna be nice and we don't want them to feel excluded, okay? But we need to do a better job of determining effectiveness of meetings and who's there. All right, so again, just a few examples on my slides. Hopefully everybody can see those, you know, ghostprogs.com. But there was blogs, there's some different things around time management apps. And in these three, I would say that there were seven out of 10 of them that were overlaps in regards to tools to help you effectively manage your time, okay? All right. I have included a little information about overcoming procrastination. Again, on the slide deck primarily, but it is mentioned as one of those time efficiency components on the list as far as procrastination eating up uh, your time. And I know one for me in the past. We don't like to do, if we don't like to do something and we can put it off because it's not urgent, 
it still might be important, and then it becomes urgent, too urgent, right? Um, because we don't like to eat it, or we don't like to do it. The reason I said eat it was there's a book called, you know, Eat the Frog First, I think, or something, and that was the time management concept of anything that you absolutely despise and hate doing, do that in your prime energy time and do it as fast as you can early in your process in the day. Because if you do that, the rest of your day is downhill. Okay, so think about that. Again, that strategy might work for some, and other people say that's really stupid, and I'm okay either way you go with that. Um, but it may be worth a try. If you hate doing reports and paperwork, but you know you're at your best at 5 a.m., let me do reports and paperwork from 5 to 7. They're done. The rest of my day, I don't have to worry about it, right? It's a done deal. So that can be personally rewarding, kick into that motivation factor, and it's just demonstrating a little discipline to make that happen. Other components of procrastination that you might want to be aware of, you know, look at common threads in your tasks, okay? And I don't know if this applies necessarily to your caseloads, but maybe you have caseloads and cases that you're managing that are fairly similar. So if I'm working with the Department of Housing with a particular client, can I work with the Department of Housing with my all five or six or seven clients that need me to make that call? And can I manage that process more effectively, make one call for five clients? Um, how can I do that? Scheduling-wise, is there an opportunity to meet? And again, I'm not saying this applies to your world, but um, can I get five people together? If they're all working on trying to establish a residence somewhere, um, and we're working through that process, can I meet with all of them um, at the same time and kind of do a group session, present some information, talk about needs, and maybe create some relationship bonds that people can help each other out? So again, I don't know if that applies or it doesn't apply, but maybe conceptually um, it's an idea that makes sense at, in some level um, of the work that you're doing, okay? Um, asking for help, we're terrible at that. Okay, um, I do a lot of work with teams, and one of the trust factors is vulnerability-based trust. People do not like to ask for help because it makes us look like we are not capable of doing our jobs. Um, but at some level, we have to reach out to folks and say, hey, you know, I'm struggling with this. Okay, what are my time management struggles? If I'm being honest, I've been honest with you. It's just the way it is. Some people work on different things, and people have different ideas. So the ability to ask for help is really, really important. And if you're being a productive person, and you're doing a good job, and your performance is good, there's no reason why things aren't gonna pop up. Ask for help, get the help you need to be really highly successful, okay? The bottom one has everything to do with discipline, okay? And actually, um, if you're a fan of the One Minute Manager or Ken Blanchard or any of, his, any of his work and things, he talks about committing to our commitments, right? We make commitments, and then what do we do? Eh. I'm going to commit to exercise four times a week. Eh, now I have to really commit to my commitments, right, to make them happen. And that's the kind of higher level of discipline. So whatever things on this list might have resonated with you, maybe it's just one item again. I'm a huge one item fan. If you select that, if you have an issue with procrastination um, or that's a challenge for you in some way, you know, just select this item and see if it carries over to the action items um, for the workshop. All right. You also have a handout um, that I just, I'll touch a base on real quick. I put an eliminating clutter handout, which is handout number 11. So the same thing here, you know, if you're a person and you kind of are surrounded by a mess, it usually doesn't translate to being highly organized or highly efficient. Um, so even if you're comfortable with that, um, I just encourage you at some level to challenge yourself to say, it's important for me to make sure that I'm decluttering my life. And this might be paperwork, uh, this might be things that are just interfering as distractions, but whatever decluttering means is going to be important as well, okay? So if we take a look at the execute phase, I mentioned this. Here's just a little worksheet, and it is page, um, it's building your support network, handout number 12. It just gives you a place to list these people and relationships. So start with the people right now that um, are on your list. Who do you work with? Um, who supports your work and your success and your goals? Um, and then taking a look at things that are a challenge for you, what relationships or people do I need to have on my list um, to ensure that I have the support network in place to be successful in my job? Get clear on how you can also help each other out. I've worked with executive teams at Fortune 500 companies, and when I did this exercise around kind of basically saying, hey, with regards to the strategic objectives and projects you're involved with, have you even sat down and talked to each other about how your areas influence each other? And those folks were like, I guess we haven't, because they're relying on people below them to do some of those things. But there was a lot of value for them to have those discussions at that level, um, just because there's opportunities, again, to help each other out and be supportive. 
So again, who needs to be on your list to help you be successful? How can they help me? Be clear on that. Make sure they know how they can help you. Don't take that for granted. Have that conversation and then put, put that power to work for you. So again, that sense of control, I got a good positive support network and that's gonna be beneficial to me. The last thing that I think is really, really important is you love to do something, okay? It might be a, hab or it might be a hobby. Um, it might just be something that you enjoy doing. Um, but be clear on what that is. This creates motivation through celebration. So if we are disciplined, we do execute, um, and we are improving our, our, our workflows and our time management and our productivity and all these things, rewarding yourself is highly, highly, highly important. Okay, so if you love to take a walk on the beach, as an example, was a, uh, an example that came up in one of my, my mission, vision, values uh, seminars that I did with someone, and they lived here in Rochester. so. Basically, the challenge was, well, what do they do with that, right? Um, so I said, no, it's not walking on the Atlantic Ocean beach, um, but can you steal a morning and take a walk on one of the beaches on Lake Ontario, right? Um, and just build in some kind of time that you're doing some of that. Um, this might be a five minute break. So this really challenges to say the things that I like to do, if I like to crochet and that relieves my tension a little bit, then let's take, when I take a five or 10 minute break at work, maybe I just crochet for five minutes. Um, people will say, well, that's just silly. Well, maybe, but there might be a lot of power in that in regards to how you re-energize your batteries and become more productive um, in times maybe that you're not. So this is a fun activity anyway. If you just brainstorm things I love to do, see what comes up. There's no rules on it. Don't judge yourself. Just jot down a million things, as many as you can and see how you can incorporate those, but make sure that some of these things are showing up on your schedule. Um, so again, where do you do those things? I enjoy reading, I don't have time. I'm gonna listen to audiobooks in the, in the car on my travel time. Boom, I just captured some of that, right? Um, I'm gonna, you know, I like to, uh, you know, uh, what do I wanna say? I like to go to sporting events, that's me, but I can't go to a lot of them because of cost, time, whatever the resources are, but I'm gonna at least schedule, you know, at least once or twice during the basketball season to go to a couple games. I'm just gonna put them on my schedule and put them way out there so that they pop up and that time's protected. So whatever it is for you, it's really important to celebrate because we get energy and motivation from that, which is gonna be critical to the discipline we need to make some personal changes to manage our time more effectively. All right, so wrapping things up, what's next for you? What I just encourage you to do, one or two things. We went through a lot of different information today. There's lots of lists of information. If you pick interruptions in the very beginning, what pieces went, did, did we go through? Did you get any ideas on analyzing the interruptions you're actually having, maybe tracking those and where they're coming from? Are they interruptions that other people are forcing on you or are they interruptions that we kind of created for ourselves because we said that's okay? Uh, but we need that analyze, analyzed list of interruptions first, and then we can kind of build on that, okay? Um, if it's something that has to do with delegation, we're getting interruptions because, um, you know, we haven't given things away and people are asking for information that they should already have. Maybe I'm empowering myself to fix the communication processor system that will generate that information for them so that that interruption goes away, okay? But again, whatever the one or two things are, or even if there's just one, I would just jot it down and for the next week or two, do that one thing a little bit differently or make sure you're doing that thing differently and then evaluate in two weeks. Did it make a difference or not? How much time did you get back or how much more energy did you have to go attack your job um, so that you're feeling more productive and in more control, okay? So at that, my hope is that I stimulated some thought, I challenged a little bit of a mindset around time management, um, but also gave you some ideas and or some tools and things that you can kind of adapt or pick one or two things to make them your own um, to really look at your job a little bit differently and uh, pick up a few efficiencies that lead to that sense of control. And uh, again, don't forget to celebrate. All right, so we'll take questions if there's any. Um, and like I said, the information will be available. Make sure you have any information that you need. Um, if there's anything specific, make that request through the channels and we'll be sure to get that information in your hands. So if there's any questions, feel free to fire those in in the Q&A. Do we have any questions Are we over there that you can see? All right. Is there anything else to close with? We'll just give them a minute um, if anyone has questions. Okay. And we will be sending the presentation out to you.
so that you can print those off. And the other documents were sent um, from Ruth. You should have received that in an email, I think, um, last week or yesterday. All right, doesn't look like we have any questions, but um, again, if you have any that you want to fire through the channels and get those answers, we'd be happy to, to follow up with you on those as well. Are you all set? All right, if not, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next Tuesday, the 29th. I appreciate your time and uh, committing an hour or so to uh, the time to go over this information. Hope something's stuck and is helpful to you. And again, thank you very much for uh, making me part of your training. Have a great day.